Hi, this is Dr. Richard Ruling here to share with you on the Total Health Channel. Uh, plan to do so week for week and even in between times if uh, something comes up of, of significance. Please, uh, if you do like this, uh, indicate it and share it with your friends. That's part of uh, Wise Virgins having light to share. And I'm going to be making uh, this series on the uh, Sabbath School lesson quarterlies for this new quarter is on Revelation. Of all things, great book and great messages. And what we're going to uh, share from week to week, I think you'll see that uh, you really ought to come <laughs> here to look because uh, the quarterly is missing some important stuff, I think. And uh, we'll kick it off this week with a, a focus on a phrase early in the lesson, the good news from Patmos. Uh, yes, it was good news from Patmos, but uh, it didn't say what the good news was. And when Christ came uh, into Galilee in Mark 1.15 preaching, he referred to the, the, the kingdom of God is at hand, repent and believe the gospel. Well, the gospel is the good news uh, of the kingdom, okay? And so, um, bottom line, I want to just explain, uh, we'll look at the phrases, good news. Throughout history, the good news has been different things to, to different people in different times. In Noah's time, the good news was a boat. They just didn't, they didn't see it. They, they didn't believe there was going to be a flood had it never rained. But it, it really was good news if you had faith. It takes faith to appreciate the good news, okay? And if you have faith in God's word, you know, we're sinners, we're going to die. We don't have any destiny, but we could have very high destiny if we believe the good news he's provided. And uh, when you come to Abraham, different good news, okay? Real estate, uh, it was to be God was going to give that to him for him and his seed, okay? Not in Ur where the, they were worshiping idols and so on. So uh, God had a plan, but it took faith again for Abraham to believe it. In fact, when he got there, it was a famine. But he, he stuck, stuck with it, held on for the faith, and God made the covenant, even gave him a, his name. Abraham means father of a multitude or father of a great nation, but you know, he had no children. So uh, it took faith, and Abraham had some lessons to learn, and we do too, of course. Uh, Ellen White said that late in life. We have uh, many lessons to learn, many, many to unlearn. And she had a great attitude as she was learning some lessons too late in life. Uh, it was the second coming, 600 times she said it's soon, but it wasn't soon for them. It's soon for us, I believe, and the signs are clear, but we don't need to get into that right now. Let's uh, look again at the, uh, the good news, how it changes. In M Moses' time, the good news was freedom from bondage and the promised land again. And uh, the problem was there were giants in the land. They didn't want to go there because of those giants. And so uh, uh, how about us? And are we interested in, in uh, trouble that's coming in this country, I believe, very soon? And uh, will our faith hold us through life and death issues like Daniel? Daniel had life and death issues in chapters 1 through 6. And uh, we, we have to be ready for that and be willing to die. Uh, if we are really willing to die for, for our faith, God may honor us as he did uh, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego. So let's uh, stay faithful and see that uh, life and death issues, uh, as in Egypt there were uh, death and calamity fell on them. How did the kingdom come? Uh, let me back up and say this, that, that I was saying that kingdom and good news is different at different times. Uh, Moses gave good news of freedom from physical bondage, and Christ came, gave good news of freedom from sin and salvation, spiritually. Okay, And my point is that today we've got better news. How? Because it's all of them. We can be spared the uh, destruction of Noah. We can have a promise of a better land as Abraham. We have freedom from physical bondage, but also spiritual bondage in my father's house are many mansions. And so we have we can have it all. And really, in the wedding parable, it's still better yet, okay? In the wedding parable of Luke 12, uh, verse 44, to the servant that is so doing, Christ says he will make him ruler over all that he has. Since my name is ruling, I really want to understand that one. And I think uh, it's not about me, though. It's really about 144,000, okay? Because uh, the 144,000 are virgins. And how do we understand that? On the Internet, I saw a guy who believed that those were male Jews in Israel, uh, about one year old, who hadn't lied yet because there's no guy on their mouth. You know, if that isn't a humorous, I don't know. But uh, I don't believe that. I believe that the wedding parable explains who the virgins are. They are the wise virgins that get into the wedding. 
And Luke 12 has more information on that, on how we can be ready. Uh, won't go there right now, but my point is that Israel became the kingdom, like we're talking, now this is the good news of the kingdom, they became the kingdom when they made a covenant at Sinai. In Exodus 19, verse 5 and 6, God says, If you'll keep my covenant, you'll be to me a kingdom. And in Jeremiah 3, 14, he says, Return to me, I'm married to you. Well, when did they get married? They got married when they made the covenant. Okay, that's God is regarding a covenant as a marriage relationship. And that's why Christ could say in Matthew 7, verse 21 and 22, when the people say, Lord, we did many things in your name, uh, miracles, cast out demons. Uh, and he says, I never knew you. The word knew you, uh, genosko, Greek word, is a marital love or a covenant love. We have to have a covenant relationship in the end time, and it's the new covenant that he's going to write his law in our hearts. It has an end time context in Jeremiah 31. Uh, it starts out, the chapter starts out in the, uh, at the same time. But the previous phase, verse, phrase from Jeremiah 30, verse 24, says, In the latter day you'll consider it and at that same time. Uh, and then the context is I'll make a new covenant with the house of Israel and so on. He'll write their laws in their heart. You won't have to tell anybody else to know the Lord. We all know him. So uh, I believe that's for the wise virgins that get into the wedding who are ready when he knocks. Okay, that's in Luke 12, 36. More on that later, but uh, that's the, the big broad view. And uh, when disciples wanted in Acts 1, 6 to know if he's going to restore the kingdom, it wasn't the kingdom within them. You know, Luke 12, uh, I'm sorry, Luke 17, verse 21 says the kingdom of God is within you. But uh, we, we know we've got to have the, his spirit in us, and individually we can have his kingdom. But the disciples were looking for a collective kingdom when God was going to do great things for them, and he said it's not for you to know. Sorry. He, basically, they had failed him, uh, you know, when they ran, when they should have stayed with him through the trial. Won't go and explain right now, but anyway, the... Uh, he said, not for know the times and seasons, but that phrase is used one more time in the New Testament. It's in 1 Thessalonians 5, 1, of the times and seasons, brethren, you know perfectly, uh, the day of the Lord, which is the end time period, comes as a thief, suddenly. When they're saying peace and safety, sudden destruction comes. The sudden destruction is like the sudden unlook for calamity in Ellen White's description of the wedding parable. Of the midnight cry. The cry at midnight goes back to Egypt when also there was calamity and sudden destruction and a covenant made 50 days later. In our case, I don't think it's 50 days later. I think it's uh, uh, during that same week. The wedding, the wedding week is the week of Passover. The wedding parables all have Passover imagery. And the uh, wedding feast in Matthew 22 is the Feast of Unleavened Bread. But it's not about crackers. Uh, Christ said, beware the leaven of the Pharisees, their doctrine. We have a leavened gospel uh, with our church leaders telling us, oh, you don't need to keep Passover. You know, uh, All you need is a relationship with Jesus. Well, how is he going to save us if we don't do what he says? And he says to watch. Uh, the word watch means be awake. Gregorio is the Greek word. Uh, that would be unfair for him to ask if he, if he was any old time. Oh, he can't be awake every night. But... Uh, Passover was the only night in the year it was required, okay? Uh, he said, watch with me. Couldn't you watch one hour? That was on the eve of Passover. And we're, we just forget all that. We gloss over it. We just think, well, that was his problem, not ours. Well, uh, time of judgment, we're, judgment fell on Christ. We can be delivered because it fell on him, okay? But we need to be watching, uh, in, and we don't have to kill lambs and eat them, but we should eat the lamb spiritually. Christ was the lamb. And we should review the closing scenes on that eve uh, and then watch and pray, basically. So thank you for considering this. Um, uh, we believe that the kingdom is impending in our time based on uh, uh, 1 Thessalonians 5. It says, when they say peace and safety, sudden destruction is coming. Well, peace and safety were the uh, key words in the UN theme for last year, 2017. Actually, it's uh, a year and a half ago now they chose that. But... Um, uh, Peace and safety uh, suggests to us that times are impending very close now. We should watch and be ready. And uh, more on this later. But I want to promise you uh, important information in the, relative to these Sabbath school lessons from week to week. A real bombshell next uh, lesson for the second uh, lesson of the quarter. 
uh, I guarantee it is uh, information that uh, you haven't considered and uh, you will find it very interesting promise uh, give it a look uh, toward the end of the week Thursday or Friday when I plan to post it if you like these videos uh, please like and share them with others uh, and uh, um, let me share also one other thing um, Today, you can get a free book on the internet. It's uh, Turkey Soup for People Who Are Chicken About End Times, and it does have more information on the wedding parables, uh, guaranteed. Uh, take a look at it. The wedding parables imply that we don't understand them. Uh, we're asleep with our lights out in the Matthew 25, verse 5. And in Luke's parable, uh, even Peter didn't understand it. He said, are you speaking this parable to us or to everybody? Uh, so we need to look and try to understand in... Uh, Matthew 22, the invitation to the wedding feast is scorned and ridiculed. Well, why would you do that to the king's invitation, to God's invitation, really? Uh, he is the king behind it. So uh, uh, we need uh, to take a look and understand this better and uh, take a, get, a, get a free copy today. Uh, either click the link at the bottom of this YouTube, the first post has a, a link at the bottom, or go to Amazon, type in my name, Richard Ruling, and uh, you can see the book free today and a dollar tomorrow. Dollar's not much. You can afford that if you missed uh, today on the Sabbath. But uh, the point is, uh, I want you to have it, uh, review it, uh, give some comment on it. Uh, we need a real forum because the church is basically closed to discussion. If you don't say something that fits in with their pre-programmed quarterly, um, it's off the topic, it seems like to them. I've had that comment made to me when I was just responding to what something the teacher said. And uh, they didn't want to go there. So uh, the bottom line is that the uh, Agalos messenger in Laodicea is blind. And uh, also, uh, it says in Isaiah 42, verse 16, who is blind or as deaf as my messenger? Uh, they don't hear either, okay? So try it sometime. Uh, it, it doesn't work so well. And uh, need, to, need to interchange the ideas. Ellen White says in... in um, I'm sorry, I don't have the quote right now uh, of where it's from, but she says it is necessary to meet together and interchange thoughts and ideas in regard to our duty in God's Word. And it's in uh, uh, second testimonies on how we should keep the Sabbath, um, but I don't have the page number for you, sorry. But uh, we need to interchange, discuss, be like the Bereans, receive the word ready with readiness, it says in Acts 17, verse 11, and then search and see if it's so in the Bible. Uh, don't hammer them over the head, just keep an open mind. And uh, if they want to believe that, that's fine, but uh, uh, there's better information sometimes, and I promise you some. So thank you very much. God bless you, and uh, we'll, we'll see you again later.